Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game uh, from round 5 of the semi-finals of the Chess.com Global Chess Championship Finals 2022. It is Anish Giri versus Nihal Sarin and uh, I uh, saw this game while I was taking Medo for a walk. Uh, I saw, uh, saw it on Twitter. Fabi said that it's a perfect game by Anish. It's a beautiful victory. So Fabi spoiled it for me. I'm spoiling it for you. Uh, but it is uh, the moves that we are interested in. And this game definitely has some beautiful moves. The bit the game basically ends uh, in in a few moves uh, right after the opening, uh, but then you are required to show that you are truly better. It's uh, something like um, uh, if you know that uh, uh, game Bobby Fischer played against uh, Samuel Ryshevsky where he uh, won the queen on move 10, I believe, and then uh, Ryshevsky just played until move 40, but he could have resigned on move 10. So it's, it's not as bad as that game, but it's... Um, well, you, you'll just see what I mean. So Anish has the white pieces and he opens with e4. And here we have a move that uh, we don't see every day and that is knight to c6. A move that you will not see in classical chess, but for rapid, uh, it can uh, do wonders if you uh, catch your opponent by, by surprise. And here, uh, Nikhil Sarin goes for the Nimzovic defense. We have pawn to d4. Uh, sorry, first knight to f3, uh, we have pawn to d6 and pawn to d4 now by Anish. Knight to f6, uh, we have knight to c3 and pawn to g6 now, preparing to Fienke to the dark square bishop. We have bishop to e3 going for the standard setup, queen d2, bishop to h6 is the plan. Bishop g7, queen d2 and here Nihal just castles. We have pawn to d5, you could uh, castle queen side or, or go something like um, uh, h3, but Anish has a very clear idea of what he wants to do. d5 is a a great move because if you go to e5 then you mess a black spawn structure this way and then you play something like f3 you have a very nice center and if you go to b4 then you kick it away further pawn to a6 and then you mess up black spawn structure this way and then you go bishop h6 or something uh, but here after d5, uh, Nihal goes back a, a knight to b8, this is the standard plan, and now only now bishop to h6. We have pawn to c6 now, attacking Anisha's uh, strong center, and now uh, there is a move where bishop captures and g7 was played, so we are still in known te uh, territory, and it's actually from a game uh, that Anish played. Uh, against uh, Jeffrey Shong uh, in the 2019 uh, FIDE World Cup in Hanty Maskis uh, in Russia uh, that Anish lost after Bishop Captures on G7. Even though Bishop Captures on G7 is the top move recommended by the engine. Uh, but here Anish doesn't follow this game. Maybe he figured out, okay, I know what Nihal is doing. He uh, found that game. He saw I played some weird moves. Uh, I'm just going to castle queenside. And it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, Bishop to G4. Uh, and pawn to h4. And now you know what Anisha's plan is. He wants to push the pawn all, to, all the way to h5, sacrifice the pawn, and then, of course, even sacrifice the rook, as this is a very thematic sacrifice in uh, positions uh, such as this one. We have knight b to d7 and pawn to h5. Bishop captures on h5, and now uh, we have a, a, a lot of trades here. Bishop captures on g7, king captures, and now pawn to e5. And it's a very complicated position where uh, Nihal, if he wants to survive, he has to play knight captures on e5, which he didn't. Here, after knight captures on e5, uh, the point is uh, you could play knight captures on e5, and you should. Uh, uh, the point is that if you move the bishop, then the h file opens up for the white queen. Queen h6 check, king j8, and now just knight e4, and black resigns. If you capture, it's checkmate. If you don't capture, then white will capture with check and then deliver checkmate. Uh, so whatever you do, you're getting checkmated. So basically, after knight captures on e5, you're going to have to recapture the knight. And then comes pawn to f3, g4, you attack the bishop, you still gain access to the h6 square. So it might be uh, manageable for black, but still it's a much better position for white. However, in the game, uh, Nihal played d captures on e5, and now this is big trouble for him. d captures on c6, banish, attacking the knight, b captures, and now, of course, rook captures on h5, saying that if you capture with the knight, then the knight no longer defends this knight, and it would be very, very sad to play this position with black. Yes, you have a rook for two pieces, but um, it's not really all that impressive. It's bishop and knight for a rook and also this pawn is hanging this pawn is hanging this pawn is weak this pawn is weak uh, this would be a very very nice win for white uh, so instead g captures on h5 uh, but this also now means that with the king on g7 the queen having access to g5 it's very hard to get out of all the threats uh, and now comes knight captures on e5 and this adds a third attacker to the knight on d7 
So now you can just, uh, well, if you if you don't move the knight, then you just lose the piece. Uh, so Nihal does the only thing left for him, and that is knight captures an e5. He has to give up the queen, and uh, Anish grabs it. Bish uh, queen to g5 with check, knight to g6, and now rook captures on d8. We have rook f captures on d8, and now comes queen to c5. So the position is still very much playable for black, but uh, it is not... Um, and not easy to hold this as there are many many weaknesses so here rook to d6 defending the c6 pawn and pawn to b3 now you have to uh, improve your position on the queen side so uh, black cannot just use the rooks and knights to attack your king pawn to h4 and now pawn to a4 we have rook to e6 and now king to b2 getting your king to safety you don't want to run into something like rook e1 check and then you lose the bishop so king b2 and now pawn to a5 we have bishop to d3 3 by Anish, pawn to h6, and now knight to e2. The knight can now come to f4 if the knight from g6 moves, or you can come to d4, then to f5 with check if, if uh, uh, nothing is played here. So it's very, very hard for black to, uh, to find the plan. So here, uh, Nihal tries knight to e5, but now just bishop to f5. Goes after the rook. Okay, you don't lose the rook because you have a way out. Knight e to d7 now attacks the queen. Queen c4, and now knight to b6. Attacks the queen again. Queen to d3, and now the rook moves, rook to e5, putting pressure on the bishop here. Bishop back to h3, and now knight b to d5. So Nihal definitely finding a very nice counterplay here. Knight to d4, and now comes pawn to e6. You have to give up the c6 pawn. There's no good way to defend it. If you move it, knight f5 check, and uh, this is just, um, well, then you give up the h6 pawn. You cannot defend it. If you go king h7, then you go under the mask of the queen. Uh, and, and uh, whatever you do isn't really all that impressive so pawn to e6 and now knight captures on c6 attacks the rook on e5 and now comes rook to g5 uh the probably last attempt uh, at maybe maybe playing this is knight b4 attacking the white queen and the knight kind of forcing a trade here on b4 uh, but still, white would have this very nice bishop to g4. It's not an, an easy move to find, but with the black king being white in the open, it will, uh, it, of course, a player of Anisha's caliber will, will spot this instantly. Point is that now if knight captures, then you have queen to d4 attacking the rook, attacking the knight, and you will win back your material. You will win back the b4 pawn eventually, and then the three connected pass pawns on the queen side will do good work. So after knight captures on c6, rook to g5 instead, we have queen to d4 now uh, not allowing the knight on f6 to move and you will eliminate one of the defenders with pawn to c4 so rook to a6 attacks the knight here knight to e5 and now rook to b6 but now just pawn to c4 uh, and now you are dislodging the knight that's defending the rook here so rook to b4 is needed now the knight cannot be captured and now comes knight to c6 attacking the rook on b4 now knight to c6 is uh uh, winning uh, it, w without without any questions, uh, but I will just show bishop captures on e6 because it's really awesome. Point is that after captures, you have queen a7 check, and now the knight controlling uh, uh, f7 and g6, you have to go somewhere. If you go here, the knight f7 check picks up the, the rook on g6, uh, on g5, and uh, if king to g8, doesn't matter. Queen to f7 check, king h8. Now, knight to g6 check, you force uh, a trade here, rook captures, queen captures, and yes, you have two knights and a rook for a queen, but this knight it has to move and then this knight will hang so completely winning for white so knight to c6 instead by uh, anish we have pawn to e5 now attacking the queen queen a7 and now knight to f4 uh, and now not going going for the rook, uh, but rather knight to d8. It's more important to go after the f7 pawn as it cannot be defended. We have knight to h7 and now knight captures an f7, threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries like uh, this one. So king to f6, getting the king out of harm's way, and now comes knight captures on g5. And, and again, the position is completely winning for Anish, but for your viewing pleasure, I will show a forced checkmate in 12, uh, that is knight to d6. And now you are basically threatening mate in one as the bishop covers uh, d f5 and d6 squares. Uh, the only way to defend is king, rook to g7. And now this fork uh, nicely uh, starts a, a, the king hunt, king g5, queen captures and g7 check, knight to g6, and now again knight to d6. Absolutely yeah, beautiful, knight f6, knight to f7 with check. 
king to f4 and now queen captures an h6 check king e4 and now queen to e3 will be checkmate as the bishop covers f5 and the pawn covers d5 so okay it's uh, winning whatever you do uh, but it's a forced line so i know you guys um, enjoy uh, such lines so knight captures on g5 was played we have knight captures on g5 and now queen captures on a5 now threatening the rook here knight to e4 by nihal uh, one last attempt at tricking anish uh, because if you capture uh, knight to d3 check forks the king and the queen and then let's say you captures captures uh, but still three connected pass pawns on the queen side will be winning for anish so it's more of a uh, you know, just trying to hang in there and hope for something move. Uh, queen to d8 with check with king to f7 and now pawn to a5. Starting to advance the pawn here. Knight captures an f2, now pawn to a6. We have knight 2 to d3 with check and now king to c3. We have pawn to e4. A7, we have knight to e2 with check and king to d2. Uh, and it was in this position on move 45 that Nihal Sarin resigned the game and Anish takes the lead in their match as this was the fifth game of the match. Uh, first two games they exchanged uh, uh, wins and then uh, game three and four ended in a draw and now Anish wins the fifth game uh, of their semi-final match. So here you resign as uh, next move white gets a queen and there's no way to continue the attack. You could try something like knight e to c1 and maybe try and push a pawn, but still, uh, white gets a queen, you're gonna play knight capture some b3 with check, and then after king e3, there's just no way to continue the king hunt, uh, and of course, black will uh, have to resign at some point. Uh, so yeah, uh, after king to d2, Nihal resigned, and Anish takes the lead, and uh, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it's, a, it, it, it's a wonderful game, it's, uh, it's hard to say if the game can be salvaged uh, after uh, this... Uh, 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 D captures an e5 move knight captures an e5 and black can probably hold uh, probably not in a practical game but after uh, this uh, exchange here rook captures pawn captures and queen g5 check uh, winning the black queen uh, probably with with a perfect play uh, maybe you can hold this with black but you've seen that it's uh, not not all that easy even though uh, both Nihal and uh, Anish played pretty much uh, all engine moves uh, for, for, for the entire game uh, Anish was just um, able to uh, outplay him as he was up material. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Nimzovic uh, had many great ideas, but this opening uh, obviously was not one of them. Uh, but what are you going to do? Sometimes it's going to work against your opponent like it did for Jeffrey Shong when he played it against Anish in 2019 FIDE World Cup. But uh, now it uh, didn't. Even though this is rapid, Anish, of course, improved on that game and he didn't allow himself to get surprised because you always have to... Uh, stay on top you have to even the, the uh, like Kasparov said uh, it, it's not only important to analyze and improve the games you've lost but also the games that you've won because your opponents will find uh, what you've messed up even in the games that you won so those are maybe even more important to uh, to analyze uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Do you agree with Fabi that this is a perfect game by Anish? It is definitely a beautiful victory. I don't know if it's a perfect game, but it definitely is, uh, is a nice one. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Jack Obi, the Goncalo Marovo, Martin Georg Paparik, Sofus Sveres Onfine, and uh, Seshadri Subramanian for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.